Hello, and welcome to Vivork. I'm Brian Watrous. This is the 13th video in a 10-part video series in which we're exploring how to automate using VMware vRealize Orchestrator. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a variety of JavaScript resources that you'll take advantage of as an Orchestrator developer. Now, the first thing to know about JavaScript is that it is one of two languages that are used in the world of Orchestrator. For you, as an Orchestrator workflow developer, you're going to be using JavaScript to write code to tell your workflows what to do. Now, as you already know from previous videos in this series, there's a lot of things that you can do in Orchestrator that don't require any Java scripting or programming at all. Instead, you use various schema elements, you drag and drop them into your workflow schema, hook them up, and your workflow does what it needs to do. But there will be times when you do need to write some JavaScript code. So again, we're going to be taking a look at those resources in this video. The other programming language that's used in the world of Orchestrator is Java. Now, Java and JavaScript are not the same thing. There are some similarities between the languages, but they are two completely different languages. Java is used in the world of Orchestrator for creating uh, Orchestrator plugins. And additionally, it's used in the writing of the Orchestrator workflow engine itself. But for our purposes, as workflow developers, we don't need to know anything about Java. We do need to know about JavaScript. As you can see here, one of the places that you're going to use JavaScript in your workflows is in the scriptable task schema element that I've introduced earlier in this video series. But in addition to the scriptable task, there are a few other places where you will use JavaScript coding. And one of those is in the custom decision schema elements. You'll recall those are used to branch different ways in your workflow. Actually, I take that back. I don't think I've talked about decision elements in this video series yet. I'm gonna. It's uh, one of the next few um, videos we'll be talking about that. But for uh, sake of brevity, the custom decision element is uh, essentially like an if-then statement in your orchestrator workflow. We'll be talking about it in a video coming up very soon here. The other place where you will see JavaScript code uh, necessary sometimes is in things called actions. Now, actions we did talk about earlier in this video series. We're going to get a chance in the next few videos to take a closer look at actions. But scriptable tasks, custom decisions, and actions are three places where you will use JavaScript coding. So since you're going to be doing all this JavaScript coding, again, it doesn't have to be that much. Much of orchestrator development work doesn't involve JavaScripting. But if you do need to do JavaScripting, you need to know JavaScript. In order to learn JavaScript, you can go about that a couple different ways. One way you could do that would be to go pick up a book on JavaScript. There are lots and lots of books on JavaScript. The books that you pick up uh, tend to be a bit hefty. Uh, they may run in the several hundred pages. But the good news for you as an orchestrator developer is you don't need to read that whole book. In fact, you can typically read about the first quarter of the book, just rip out the rest of the book and toss it away because as an orchestrator developer, the stuff that they talk about in the later portions of the book are not going to be relevant. Uh, later portions of the books will talk about how to do things like create web pages with JavaScript, or other such things that are irrelevant for our purposes because, as we explained earlier in this video series, Orchestrator is a headless programming environment. There's, there's no place in Orchestrator to display a web page from that JavaScript code that you're writing or to pop up an alert window. JavaScript does allow you to do those things, but we don't do those things in Orchestrator. So what you want to focus on as you read the first roughly quarter of that book is all the places where it talks about the basics of JavaScript. For instance, uh, the basics are going to include things like a discussion about what variables are, how variables work, how you assign values to variables, how you see what's in a variable. Uh, other things that are important are various branching constructs like if-then statements, if-then-else statements, switch statements, looping constructs like while loops and do while loops and what else is there? Uh, JavaScript also has for loops and for each loops. Those basics are the things that you need to know about in JavaScript. Uh, actually, one more thing I should toss in. You also need to know about object-oriented programming um, facets of JavaScript. But we've already started delving into some of that in earlier parts of this video series. And we'll look at object-oriented programming later on. So 
if you learning JavaScript from a book, just read the first hundred or so pages and you'll be good to go. You'll know everything that you need to know for orchestrator purposes. On the other hand, you might want to go use various resources that are available on the internet. So for instance, one of the sites, actually you can see three sites here. These are not the only sites. These are just three that uh, I and my students happen to use. Uh, you can use others, but eloquentjavascript.net, w3schools.com, and codeacademy.com. Um, let's actually go take a look at those real quickly here. So let me find my web browser. Here's my web browser, and we'll start with Eloquent JavaScript. Uh, as you can see here, eloquentjavascript.net is the website that accompanies the book called Eloquent JavaScript. And uh, one of the reasons my students have uh, mentioned this website to me multiple times is because it's uh, the book and the website is uh, very friendly. It's, it's written in a tutorial style to help you to understand JavaScript. So it teaches you see the things you need to know without diving uh, into the deep end of all sorts of technical details initially. It does go deeper and deeper, but it starts you off on a nice, easier path. Another thing that's nice about the eloquentjavascript.net website is the website itself allows you to run JavaScript code in the website itself. So you don't have to stand up some environment um, that understands JavaScript to learn what you're learning from this book. You can just do so right in the website itself. So that's our first resource, uh, eloquentjavascript.net. The second resource is called w3schools.com. Now, out, out of these three, this is the one that I tend to use the most personally, because in addition to having a tutorial that it weaves throughout this website, um, the w3schools JavaScript section also has a very handy technical reference that talks about the basic constructs that you need to know about in JavaScript. So to get here, the first thing you need to do, as you saw in the URL a moment ago, let's flash that URL again. Whoops, too far. There we go. Um, that uh, URL, you'll notice uh, if you go to w3schools.com slash JS, that will take you to the section that talks about JavaScript. W3schools also has resources for other programming languages, but the one we're interested in is JavaScript. So if you go to that URL, in addition to the tutorial style uh, portions of this website. Over here on the left side, there's a ton of information that's very, very useful and allows me to quickly look up things that I need to know. For instance, if I am um, needing to do things like create strings, and I don't remember how do you create strings in JavaScript, I can just go to the JS string section here and it will give me the lowdown on how to create strings. So for instance, I can create a variable called x, and to, to create the string itself, you put this string of characters in quotes. OK, great. So now I remember how to create strings. Now, that's obviously a very easy example. But other places in here, uh, for instance, if you want to know how to create uh, if-then type statements, the JS condition section shows you how to create an if statement. It shows you how to create an if-then else statement. It shows you how to create a switch statement. That's another branching construct. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, the different types of loops that JavaScript allows you to work with, such as while loops, do while loops, for loops, and so forth, they're all talked about here in this reference section of the W3Schools website. And again, it talks about these things in a very concise way. So for me, I love using that as a resource because as uh, in addition to being a, a programmer in the world of Orchestrator, I work in other programming languages. And while there's a lot of similarities between the languages, as I flip-flop between them, I need to know how do I do a for loop, or how do I do an if-then statement, or how do I do a switch statement in whatever language I'm working in. So if I'm working in JavaScript, I go to w3schools.com slash JS, and the left side of the screen has all these helpful, quick and dirty, uh, technical, syntactical descriptions of what the different constructs are. So very, very useful resource. Uh, one other resource that a lot of my students have mentioned to me is codeacademy.com. Uh, um, in the case of codeacademy.com, you need to create an account, but that account is free. The other two sites, you don't need an account. Code Academy, you do, but you just go to codeacademy.com, say you want a new account, give them your email address, and assign a password and a username, and boom, you're in. If you go to the catalog, as you can see, Code Academy has a number of different resources for various programming languages, including JavaScript. 
So I've selected JavaScript and down below, if we look at the various JavaScript resources, you'll see that they have a whole bunch of different courses that you can take on JavaScript. Uh, so here's uh, uh, one, here's another, here's another. In fact, here's a whole bunch of them. But for our purposes, again, as a orchestrated developer, we don't need to know all the f fancy uh, SQL Lite or jQuery or all these other things that these other courses talk about. All you need to do is take a look at the introduction to JavaScript. Now, as you can see here, it's got 35 hours worth of training. That's going to be way more than you need. Again, just like the books that I talked about before, um, even in this introduction, it goes on and on and on and on, which is great if you need all that information. But for us as orchestrator developers, you don't need to go through all 35 hours of this JavaScript um, course from Code Academy. Again, just focus on the basics in that course and you'll be good to go. All right, let's give me me back to my PowerPoint slide. Um, one other resource that's a great way to learn how to do various types of JavaScript coding is to take a look at the orchestrator work that other people have done. So for instance, um, the workflows and actions that uh, other people such as plugin developers, uh, VMware developers, they, they write workflows and actions and you can actually see what they're doing. As you can see here, this is a screenshot of the VRO client. And in the VRO client, as you know, you can go to the workflows tab or the actions tab to see all the workflows and all the actions that are defined in your orchestrator server. Uh, those could be workflows like these ones I'm showing you here with the vCenter server plugin. Um, that's a plugin that's installed by default or any other plugin that you install is gonna install additional workflows and actions and you can see them. So if you want to explore a particular workflow, such as this one that I have selected here, you can do so in the orchestrator client by selecting the workflow or the action. And normally what you do to see the code is to go to the pencil icon, the, the edit icon. But as you can see here, VMware ships workflows and actions with edit permissions turned off. Now that doesn't mean you can't see the code, it just means you can't change it. So to see the code, what you'll do is you'll uh, select the workflow or select the action, then go to the schema element that has the code that you wanna see and click on the view details button. As you can see down below, you'll be able to select the scripting tab and see all of the code in that particular schema element. Now the permissions mechanism that VMware uses to control whether or not you can edit a schema element or a workflow or an action, that same permissions mechanism that allows us to control whether or not you can edit things also allows us, if we choose to, to allow or disallow you the ability to see what's in them. So for instance, we could have designed the permissions on the vCenter plugin to prevent you from seeing this JavaScript code. But by and large, all the plugins that VMware supplies have edit permissions turned off so that you can't mess them up, but view permission turned on. So the various workflows and actions that we're supplying provide a wealth of examples of how we're doing things with the JavaScript code. So take advantage of that. And additionally, the workflows and actions that are supplied by third-party plugins and quite possibly could also give you view permission just like VMware does. Now, there's no requirement that they do that if they want to. It's their intellectual property. They can they can turn off edit permission. They can turn off view permission. They can do whatever they want with the permissions on their plugins. But by and large, you'll be able to look at our workflows and our actions and third-party workflows and third-party actions and, in effect, open up a whole world of tremendous examples of JavaScript coding so that you can see how other people do what they do with JavaScript code. All right, so that's it for this video. In the next video, what I'm going to be showing you is a resource that I created. Uh, I call it the VVORC VRO examples. It's a package that you can install into Orchestrator to use in the following videos to understand how to do things like branching statements and looping constructs and so forth. But again, that's coming up in the next video. So I'll see you over there. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you over in the next video.